I do think some people in the defensive community think that you cannot win a, a fight against a rifle with a pistol. It's just not true. Hi everyone, welcome to today's badge cam lesson here at Active Self Protection. As always, I'm your host, John Correa. I'm your co-host, Mike Bulliver. Today's video comes to us from Lodi, California. Today's video was brought to us by Mantis. The Mantis family of products is integral to ASP staff building handgun and carbine skills and are your most economical and fastest path to improvement in your skills too. Whether you choose the X10, the Laser Academy, the Blackbeard, or use them all in concert, they will help your practice be more effective, efficient, and fun. Go check them out, pick up a unit, and thank them for sponsoring today's video. It's kind of hard to see because this one's filmed on a potato, okay? But what you see that guy who's kind of wandering around by this building has ripped off some shots in the neighborhood down the street, and so there's been a bunch of 911 calls that have come in. Cops are looking for somebody out there shooting. This guy has a rifle and a pistol on him, and he is now just looking for businesses to get into. And, and you're gonna see him actually put some shots into the business here in just a minute. While I, like I say, the cops are out and around looking for him and trying to kind of triangulate where the heck this guy is. Now, why is he doing that? I don't have any idea. I don't think we will ever know why this guy was doing that. So you see him kind of wandering around here, going back and forth, and now you're gonna see him fire at the door of the building. And you see him kind of light some shots up. Again, kind of hard to see. This is a bigger surveillance video that has been zoomed in such that it looks like it was filmed on a potato. Watch the officer come up now. He, again, is gonna use his spotlight to kind of see if he can see what the heck is going on and where anybody is through here. As the building alarm, I believe, has gone off here. And so the officer is gonna try to figure out the heck is going on with this guy and that guy is kind of hiding in the bushes right next to this building and so as the officer pulls up to the left kind of behind the the stuff there you can see it's six o'clock in the morning he's gonna pull up there and that dude is gonna open fire on the officer with his rifle officer is gonna jump out immediately under rifle fire was under rifle fire in the car that's what made him get out so we actually have his badge cam here. So you're gonna see the officer again, looking around, comes under fire, jumps out. Then we actually have the badge cam audio of him engaging this guy. He hasn't turned it on yet, which is why I'm continuing to talk, but we do have it from here. So let's listen in and see what happens. He's hit. Drop the weapon! Drop it! Drop it! Drop the weapon! Let it go! He's at gunpoint. Do not pick up that gun! Do not touch that gun! Do not touch that gun at all! If you do, I will shoot you! Do not touch that gun. Do not touch that gun. Yeah, he shot at me. I shot back. So here you can see the suspect's firearms, including his rattle can AR inspired by the Mandalorian or some crap. 
the officer did hit him multiple times, but he did live and has hence been charged with attempted murder. Dude, what the crap is it with people just like randomly and insanely shooting at cops? Not the first time we've seen it. Also not the first time we've seen law enforcement win a battle against a rifle with a pistol. Had a guy on the podcast, Special Agent Jeff, uh, who did that from bad breath distance. So check it out. You know, one of the things that we get asked in these videos all the time is why in the world somebody would be stupid enough to do something like this, prowling around a business, shooting at the door, ripping off shots in the neighborhood. And you know, Mike, on some level, I'm glad I don't understand why people do this kind of thing. Yeah, the, the group of people that James May of Top Gear fame would call the criminal classes, um, there is no, sometimes no explaining what they're doing or why they're doing it. My my favorite coworker, Mike, uh, back with my old agency, used to say, you check your worldview at the door, don't try to understand and never ask, why do they hate us so much? Or, you know, why do they do what they do? Look, they're doing it and your job is not to fix society, it's to go in and, and fix the immediate problem. The police are a band-aid or a gauze or a tourniquet so they got to get in there and deal with the immediate problem not the underlying problem and the immediate problem is someone shooting at buildings for no reason now as the officer comes up here okay so this guy's ripping off shots at the door officer right now is just you know kind of searching and so i don't think he's made contact with the guy i don't think he even knows that the guy is here i will say though that you know i don't blame him at all i think he did an incredible job i think this officer has got big giant brass balls okay and and incredible dude i do think as he's rolling up here if you start coming under fire maybe your gas pedal is your best defense in the short term to get out of the kill zone here yeah no i really i want to be very clear here to to the viewers especially to the leos watching this we're not blaming this guy's john said we're not blaming this officer he did a pretty fantastic job we don't know what his you know what his go signal was here i don't know if he heard a shot if he heard his window break there's no telling why he decided to stop where he stopped and get out but for people watching this for training hey look if this is you and you can get down the road, you know, and re reposition to where you're not sort of pinned down, go ahead and do that or turn that car around and run that guy over or something. But try not to stop where he stopped in that kind of a way uh, because, you know, he ended up in a really like less than advantageous position for this gunfight. He made it, but he might have been in a little better shape had he been able to move. And I think initially it looked like he maybe didn't have it all the way in park, John. Uh, it maybe looked like he ghost rode the whip just a little bit. I don't blame him for that. You know, again, if you can't move that vehicle, it becomes a coffin. And so you want to move it or get out of it as fast as you can. And he chose to get out for whatever reason, that was the best choice for him. And, and again, if you can get out of there, okay, fine. But if you can't, get out of the car because otherwise you are stuck in place and you are a stationary target and that is a bad day. Now I wanna say the big lesson here is God bless this officer for, for being emotionally fit, for staying in the fight. And even though he's got his pistol against a rifle wielding attacker, he doesn't care, he gets out, gets his gun up and gets in the fight. And the number one, this is why we talk about attitude, then skills, then plan, ASP, active self-protection, attitude first, is because of, of how critical it is to winning the fight. And I think that he had everything he needed to attitude wise, and that's what won him the day. 100%, um, I think it's critical what you just said. So I wanna reiterate that, John. If, if you are a private citizen or a law enforcement officer, you find yourself you know, in a really bad situation like this, it, it doesn't matter if you have a plan and it doesn't matter if you have skills or tools for that matter, if you don't have the right attitude, if you don't have the attitude of, I'm gonna get in there and stop this guy from doing what he's doing, I'm gonna go home today, I'm, this is not the day I'm gonna die in, in the street in this back alley over this goofy call. I'm going to get out of my car and I'm going to handle this one way or another. Now, that officer very well could have been killed during this encounter, but I, I just feel like in any other attitude he'd had would have been detrimental to him and his community at this point. Yeah, and I think, again, what an incredible job. I also want to say a couple things here. Officers, hey, you need to be really be thinking about your vehicle as cover. One little tiny nit I might pick is that you notice he came out of the same spot to see the guy every time. You can you know, do a little bit of work around the vehicle to use the other side of the car to change levels, something like that, so that you're not playing whack-a-mole with the bad guy and showing up in the same place. Because as Pat McNamara says, people are pre-programmed to pick up patterns of predictability, and you do not want to be one of those patterns. And, and but, but again, incredible stuff. And I think also enough marksmanship to win the day and and, this is why for officers especially, doing some of that barrier shooting and using barricades and using cover, I think is an important part of your training. 100%, so often during training, you know, most most agencies across the United States at least have some sort of barrier portion of their firearms training where you, usually it's a plank that represents a wall or a corner and the officers or agents will 
get next to that and, and you know just kind of get an idea of how to use cover how to stand off it a little bit how to pie around that corner and expose as little of yourself as possible like this officer is trying to do here but i think a lot of times that part of it sort of gets blown past like okay i'm going to stand here and you know you just come all the way off from behind your cover and start shooting and you're not really sort of taking that part of the training seriously enough and you should because if you find yourself in a position to use a piece of cover that piece of cover is going to save your life and it's going to make all the difference in the world john at the end of the day this officer and his partner i might add they they walked into a really really odd really surreal dangerous life-threatening situation and this officer especially the, the main one on this video man he hung in there and he covered his ass